to us, like the people, is like if you guys are looking at this uh, pulse sex, pulse chain uh, ratio, whether you think it's it's getting interesting to you know start swapping one for the other, um, is previously on you know test nets and on mainnet, it always has been fluctuating between you know one PLS to uh, two point five PLS and one PLS to four four PLSX. I mean. What is so, the ratio right now? Right now it's 1 to 2.5 PLSX. So it seems like PLSX is getting a little bit more expensive against Pulse Chain. But then again, it's PLSX is still below SAC price, right? So people could still interpret that as cheap. Uh, I just wanted to know if anybody has like an opinion on that. It would just be good you know, to learn. I just kind of got bullish on PulseX for a while. I was kind of on the on the swap for Pulse for a long time, but then I started to kind of realize like there was so much like fud and like it was almost as bad as it could be. Um, you know, there was no single sided staking. There was, you know, I don't know. So I kind of got bullish because I kind of feel like if you were still holding PulseX, you were pretty diehard, you know? Um, so I don't know. That's a tough call. If you played that game, I would definitely uh, play it small, which I, I know you would anyways. But uh, uh, Vibra talked about that too. That uh, that's the play. Yeah, Vibra seemed, seemed to be all on it. Um yeah, definitely, you know, like, play it small. But, you know, like, um, if you see the ratio, right now it's uh, one, P one pulse chain to uh, 2.5 pulse X. And, I mean, that ratio fluctuates, right? So, if you start, like, swapping little by little, you know, as the ratio gets more expensive, let's say it goes down to 2.4, let's say you have, like, 100 million uh, PLSX, right? And the ratio goes down to 2.4. You swap like 2 million. It goes down to 2.3. You swap another 2 million. And you go swapping, right? As the ratio improves. And then, um, obviously, it will revert at some point. Because people will see that Pulse X appreciate it a lot. And they'll start taking profit. And then that ratio starts going the opposite way. That's when you start unwind unwinding that position. And then, you know, it's a, it's an easy way to like... Like, uh... Take, take profits out of the market because for me I see like I'd like to hold both you know long term whether I'm holding you know let's say I'm holding 50-50 of like Pulse Chain and Pulse X whether I'm holding like 55% uh, Pulse Chain 45% Pulse X or the ratio moves a little bit and now I'm holding 55% per, uh, Pulse X and then 45% Pulse Chain you know, I think it's very interesting to, uh, like, play around with those ratios. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there. I'm constantly seeing it fluctuate, and you can make, you know, throughout the day, like, you know, a couple, couple hundred thousand or two hundred thousand DLSX here and there, uh, depending on how much, how much you're, 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 you're trading, obviously. But it's definitely a lot of opportunity in that ratio trading. Founded all my pulse X into Groku today, so no opportunity there for me. That's my strategy as of uh, Groku launch. I used to compound it back into Vortex, but now my Vortex is like compounding automatically, always growing. So I figure the best way to expedite that is. Obviously, keep my Groku rewards because it's Vortex and compound my Vortex rewards that it pays, which was substantial. It was a pretty good compound, not going to lie, um, and bought some of that Groku dip. So now it's like exponential because uh, Groku pays me Vortex. It's like compounding. 
And if you compound on a dip, I don't know. That's my strategy. <laughs> Put on full DGN right now, so. No, I think that's a really good strategy, on you? Like, uh, all of our tokens, right? I, I think, uh, I, I mean, one, they're all deflationary, right? So, and, and not like little bit deflationary, they're hyper deflationary, right? So, you know, RFX already burned almost 19% of the supply. Goku burned right off the bat, you know, 35% of the supply. Vortex already 10% of the supply burn. Caviar already, you know, plus 5% burn. And uh, technically, people don't need to ever sell these tokens because they're gaining yield, right? So uh, if you're gaining yield and you don't have to sell the token, what's your, uh, you know, logic uh, behind, like, what's the best thing to do is just buy more of that token, you know? So just... It increases that buy pressure, that yield, that hyperdeflation. It's just a positive feedback loop all, all around. So I, I, I really like it. I don't know if you watch my. I know my production value isn't very good, but it's it's how I look at uh, the Groku Vortex um, chain. You know, there's should technically, obviously, you can't know for sure but there should be more buys and sells especially over a long period of time um with just with the way the system's set up now you know and that's the point of burn tokens right it's a small percentage but over the long run there should be more buys and sells and uh investex kind of um put my video in his video i put it up in the teleprompter but Dude, that was really weird. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, but when uh, so so everybody knows right now, like you know, Groku the the fees are really high. So if you enter LPs, it's going to tax you like a sell. So really, the structure isn't built out yet. But um, Groku is going to be in a, a lot of different pools. At least the plan I'm planning on doing it personally. Um, and I know that there was an allocation that the devs made to give to different um, pools. So these pools are going to be, you know, really lick a high value other pools. Because, like, right now, the liquidity on, like, RFX is super high. But what we really want is for these other pools to be incentivized, too. And that's what the farms are about. So when we get Groku in, like, 30 days to have... Its main pool will have, say, $50,000 of value in it. But there'll be secondary pools that these bots are going to love because they only care about making dollars. So if a pool has, like, $10,000 in it, to make a buck, you know, there can only be, that's, like, whatever, like, a tenth of a percent. So when pools fluctuate a tenth of a percent, a bot will come in there. And that's what we've been trying to achieve. So right now, these some of these other pools, you know, if they have five hundred dollars in them to make a buck, um, what's that like? Point two percent? I don't know. You got to do the math. But long story short, is the higher the value, the more um, the bots will come in because it only has to be slight ratio discrepancies between pools for these these bots to work, um, and that's the goal. But it's going to take a little bit to uh, implement that um, with, uh, you know, the fees being so expensive right now. Yeah, but, but not so long, like 30 days, right? Just a month, right? Because after 30 days, those Goku fees, they, they go down, right? To zero. Uh, that extra empty pump and dump fee. So. But everybody knows how, how it works, right? I mean, with RFX, we learned like, if you get in those pools first, um, the first people get locked in that, um, you know, that rate. So there's going to kind of be a rush, and people are going to pay that fee just so they could be first, you know, to, to lock in their rate. So it'll be interesting to see, like, 
when those pools start to really get heavy. It's not going to be when Goku's um, extra tax goes to zero. You know, people are going to try and do them, I think, to get that incentive. Because if you can get that 2x reward in Vortex, I mean, I know I'm pretty hyped about getting in that. So there's going to, I'm not going to wait till it gets to zero, that's for sure. I got to do some, you know, some math. Maybe start like DCAing into that um, incentivized pool. You know, maybe in like a week. I don't know. It kind of depends on how big your bag is, too, I guess. Yeah, I, I was going to take a look um, right now. I, I know, I know. And so just just to get accurate info, but I think some somebody was saying that the amount of uh, available supply of vortex in the market to be bought, I think it's less than ten percent of the total supply. Um, so so that that's pretty good. I think I think the figures was even less. I think it's like less than seven percent. So imagine there's not much like vortex in the market to be bought. So, you know, supply and demand, you know, it's just, it, there's a huge chance for a good, really good price appreciation. Um, and, and it's nice to see that the chat is getting fuller, um, probably uh, because, you know, we have a caviar community here together with us, right? We're, we're joining forces. And uh, just wanted to make sure if anybody wants to speak, ask questions. Uh, feel free to raise a hand. We'll invite you to speak. Um, also, feel free to share the space so that more people can know about us and join. And, um, you know, mostly, uh, our protocols are pretty new. I don't think, you know, despite a lot of people knowing about us, I don't, I don't think people know the full extent of how they work together and uh, all the intricacies behind these protocols. So... Yeah, if anybody wants to ask questions, uh, feel free. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be, you know, diving into, you know, maybe more, a little bit more, comp let's say not complex, but more, like, deeper into the rabbit hole uh, topics. So, yeah, just, just sharing that uh, side note. So, uh, supply on Vortex. So, in the liquidity pool to be purchased, there's only 6.3% of total supply available. And with the way Groku works, with so much of the fees um, going to buy Vortex, um, you know that's not very much. It's it's going to push it push it higher. It should push it higher. Um, we're getting good volume on Groku, and good for the Groku people. I mean, they're getting paid in something. Um, it's going to be hard to get, you know, at least that's the goal. We'll see how it all plays out. You never know. Yeah. And, and then, which also in turn pays the PLSX, right? So both tokens that are highly uh, appreciated, right? And, and I think one, one important thing to note, Armour, which I love your tweets. And I think a lot of people on Pulse Chain, you know, they, they miss that. Uh, but, you know, I think Vertex was the highest performing token, right? One of the highest, at least from those those ones that you were tracking. So, literally did like over a 10x so far. But yeah. still cheap, still relatively cheap for anybody who wants to get it. You know, we're still like $500,000 cap. So, on that book, a thousand percent. And in my opinion, um, the ones that did the best in that post, well, the ones that will continue to do better, you know, like Vortex, I still think is going to outperform that whole list just because of what it has going for it and so on and so forth down the list. I'll put it up in the, in the, in the prompter here. I found it. But we, we basically only have good things to come. Like we're going to, right now in the um, Telegram, in the community Telegram, we're going to 
um, incentivize people to donate PLS by giving them loyalty points. And we're going to use that money to put for DEX tools, um, mainly because there's some big names in it that, that want it. Um, his reference was it was a billboard in New York Square instead of Ohio or some congata today. Um, yeah, I, I personally like Dex Screener a lot more than Dex Tools. I prefer their UI. I prefer they're also like a lot cheaper to list. Like Dex Tools is like four times more expensive. And yeah, but I but I mean either way, like let's get it listed there. Well, Just, his point knows he knows what people are trying to achieve. So we're like. We're in this echo chamber of, of Pulse Chain right now, and we're doing really well. Um, but we're trying to get people from Solana, people from ETH, and I guess the Solana guys are big, and they're going to want to exit Solana. You know, like that thing's when it goes down, it's going to go hard, and guess where they're going to come? So if we could get on Dex Tools because the Solana people like it, you know, like I've given B Roots like three hundred dollars in super chats. You know, like let's just pay for it. Um, especially with the with that deal we have in the Telegram, where you you spend a um, hundred bucks and you get a hundred and ten dollars worth of Groku. Especially if you take fees into that, I mean, it, it, it's a pretty good deal. Let's just get it done and and let's go on after that. You know, if we gotta pay for a shill or pay for this. We'll do it, I think. Um, but I just like rewarding the people who have found us early and uh, building this space now. Because it's to me, it's not about the highs. It's about where you come back to after those paid shills, you know. Um, and that's why tax tokens are good in this, in this uh, ecosystem right now. Because when you go up hard, tax tokens make it so it doesn't come back to the bottom after. And the way we have this thing set up with Groku, um, you know, we're, we're really set up well. The, you, you guys saw my forces. We have NFTs that are great onboarding tools. And when somebody pays for an NFT, they take Vortex off the market. And, and they get... Yeah, forever, right? Yeah. And then we have... The accelerator that now is going to be gaining even more vortex because of how much of the the Groku supply is in them. So you have all those fundamentals up there that we're going to get somebody to make a better better video than me, um, and uh, show all those forces that are going towards buying more than sells, um, and that's all it really comes down to. It's it's pretty simple math, really. Uh, yeah, I agree 100%. Vortex uh, certainly primed. Uh, this is only there's just so many factors in in play, like pushing the price up. Right, there's Goku with that mass, massive like initial tax. She's gonna create buy pressure there. Um, there's literally only six point that you said six point three percent of the supply left in the market. There's the NFTs, right? Uh, out there as well. Um, plus, you have a token. Plus, it pays PLSX, right? So, people naturally want to hold it. Um, uh, one one important point as well is um, I'll probably be making an update to the farms uh, very, very, very soon, um, just to improve them overall. Uh, make like accessibility better. You can like filter by TVL, by by allocation, by fee, uh, by ROI, and um, and also introduce more proofs, right? Uh, proofs from uh, other third-party projects so we can get more eyes into the ecosystem. You know, it's just naturally people like to chase yield. Uh, so they might see a new pool open up and then they'll naturally, like, gravitate there and, you know, possibly explore other projects like Caviar, Vortex, and see what's going on. Um, so definitely probably adding a like, teddy bear uh, to the farms, um, and then I think some of some of the other big bigger projects on Pulse Chain, like with the loans, they're probably gonna close some of the pools that are you know either 
not as active or just very very low APR. Um, so yeah, that that's the, there's that funny update coming, and then yeah, obviously we'll add Goku, more tools, and we'll decide together with the community. Uh, but most importantly, um, we just wanna make sure that the the farms are, are better, right? Like they keep we keep improving our protocol and ecosystem. So that's that's one one side note as well. Yeah. Does anybody have um? Any strategies that they're they're working on that's working for them, um, or or any questions? So I'll share mine. I I think, and I think like people have different end goals, you know, different uh, portfolio sizes. But you know, we as a community, you know, we are true DeFi, true cypherpunk, right? Uh, we want crypto to take over the world, and you know, death. To the field system, uh, that's is most importantly, and yeah, we're low for life. We'll keep these protocols going for for the next twenty years because this is this is about a huge revolution in in finance and you know and society at a global level. You know, we had excellent news with uh, you know Coinbase and uh, Securities Exchange Commission. You know, uh, recent like case dismissal type of thing. But yeah, so getting to the bottom, like uh, the strategy is is what I'm trying to say. So like we're in this for the really, really, really long run, and I'm not really interested in selling tokens. I'm interested in living off passive income. You know, so why would I sell like uh, a token that you know will keep yielding me uh, coins that I can sell? You know, without that are extremely liquid, extremely, um, ex there's an extremely high market cap, uh, without affecting the price of my, you know, my, my, my principal, right? My, my principal asset. So, uh, I, I, I'm in it for the passive in income. So for me, it's like compounding part of the rewards, uh, making sure I put like some away as well. Um, because, you know, I also believe in post, post X, post chain, um, and then uh, I, I really like this ratio trading as the opportunities of, you know, making a uh, tiny little bit of profit and taking those profits out and uh, part of it, like, you know, keep compounding those those uh, those uh, those purchases, right? And I would just basically keep, keep extracting coins out of the market and uh, help with, like, just general, like, buy pressure. Uh, that's just that's just me. But if anybody else wants to speak, uh, feel free. And also, I mean, first chain is gonna. It seems like it's melting faces right now. So, for sure, yeah. If there's no questions, uh, go over this uh, Groku that was launched. Uh, what's it been? About forty-eight? No, probably forty forty-four hours ago. Um, so it was launched, and there wasn't a whole lot of 35% of, of the tokens were put in the liquidity pool. Um, so it ran up. It ran up pretty hard, pretty quick. And it has um, a high sell tax. Everybody needs to be aware. Kind of like I've heard Blast has a high sell tax. So it's kind of designed to go go up, as we want them all to do. Um, so there is that tax. There's a small tax when you buy, um, and that goes towards uh, reflections to holders and also uh, to burn. But one of the intricacies of it, and this is what I mean, it's like loyal, paying the loyal guild in a contract. Because so the dis distribution of tokens in all of these coins, right? They're all pretty much a fork of themselves. But they pay based, they pay when there's sells. And it doesn't really matter based upon volume. It's on sells, right? So right now, the contract, you can look it up. You can look up everything. It's blockchain. But um, you could see there's a lot of Vortex in the Groku contract. So it's going to disperse those over time. So, like, right now, if somebody came in, paid the tax, and went out, 
it's going to take time for that vortex to, to be distributed to all the people. So right now, say you could buy in right now, you will actually get some of the rewards that have already been collected, not just future rewards, because the contract has so much built up because of the high fees. So I think, you know, depending on what you think of the chart or, or whatever, um, it, it could be a good entry point just because of, of that philosophy right there. And one of the creators of the code um, put some tips in the Telegram chat. And um, I, I used it today when I compounded. Is I took my Groku. I made a small purchase of that. Because when you make a small purchase, it's like a cl hitting the claim button. So everything that you're due you get and if you hold those tokens a higher percent of the pool you'll get more rewards right and i know that there was quite a bit held up in the contract so what i did was i used my pulse x like i said earlier um rewards and bought groku with it one to compound but two to kind of do that claim function um and get some of those uh, rewards paid out but the fees, uh, the extra fee on Groku diminishes. It's about 1% a day. Um, you know, we got 28 days left. And the extra tax will be gone. And just that base tax will still be there. And it'll work similar to the other tokens. Yep. And um, just let you know, like, uh, the contract developer, he's, uh, he's listening in the chat. Um, so if anybody has questions for him, he might be able to speak uh, and answer questions on the contract. Uh, Kavya, um, just to ask you, if you're, if you're available to speak, so what's your experience so far with uh, your token? So that you can share a little bit more about it as well with the rest of the group. Yeah, wh where do you want me to start? Ah, feel free. Uh, I mean, like, uh, it's, uh, like the mic is all yours, so talk about whatever you want. Yeah. Well, you know, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Paul Solorian, um, Ron Murd and Paul Summer, you guys are awesome. Um, you know, they are the creators of this code and it works flawlessly. Um, the launch was very successful. We have $55,000 in liquidity right now, which is absolutely insane. It's only been about, um, six days going on seven days. So yeah, it's been a very successful launch. A lot of volatility because of the airdrop. A lot of people made a lot of money and they couldn't hold on to it. Um, they cheated it out. So we've had to deal with some volatility. But other than that, um, it's been a pretty smooth launch. And the hex rewards that are being paid out are just absolutely insane. Um, I did a few tests. You know, where I set up a few different wallets. I staked a thousand dollars worth of hex on one. Um, you know, it came out to like 1.7 T shares and then I, um, had 30,000 caviar on another wallet. And, uh, so far the caviar wallet is producing more hex than the, the stake tax, which is pretty interesting. And it's, uh, half the USD amount. It's only $500 worth. So it's pretty interesting stuff. That's awesome. I'm, I've been trying to acquire more caviar, <laughs> but it's hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, caviar are looking great. And uh, I mean, it's it's great that uh, the community is expanding as well. You know? So it's, uh, it's it's awesome. It's awesome to see that, that we're like, building together. Any anyone wants to speak? Also, feel free to you know like raise your hand and more we'll invite you.
if, if not, um, I'll just uh, ramble on here. Um, uh, continue talking about um, our ecosystem, right, on uh, first chain. Um, so, for those who might have joined um, later, you know, Goku is the newest token that we've launched, and we do have a very, 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 very high tax on it initially, but that's just for 30 days, and then it decreases, you know, gradually, little by little, uh, until it reaches zero uh, by the end of 30 days, and that's an extra tax on, on top of the regular, regular, you know, buy and sell fee, uh, and that tax was used to uh, just get the Jeeps out of our, our protocols, you know. Those people that are not really in for the long term, aren't really loyal to the community, you know, those sniper bots, uh, anybody who's not really, uh, doesn't really have the intention of, like, truly building community, truly being in for the long term, you know, the loyalty for life thing, truly being uh, about you know, true DeFi. So, this kind of like rent sink, rent seeking, like just, just want to take profit, you know, get into the chat, like, spell some fraud and then leave and, you know, not really participate in the ecosystem. So, that's the purpose of that tax. And uh, we, we started this strategy has been working really well, right? Because it's generating a like, massive amount of uh, buy pressure on, on Vertex, right? And Vertex is the token that pays you PLSX just for holding or adding liquidity. And it's been working flawlessly as well. We paid over 200 million PLSX already. Uh, so that's over like, uh, you know, $1,000 worth of PLSX. And uh, we've already managed to burn 10% uh, of the supply, which I think it's over $50,000 worth of Vertex. And with Goku, right, you learn Vertex which is this token that's becoming really, really, really scarce in the market because everybody seems to want it. One, because it pays PLSX, uh, also because of the design of the whole tokenomics. But, so there's only 6.3% off supply available in the market. So um, we don't see any wallets really holding a lot. Um, so it's... Uh, the decentralization aspect of like the liquidity, the supply, it's it's, it's looking really really good, and uh, so so by buying Goku, you're earning massive amounts of Vortex, and in turn you're gonna also earn PLSX because once once that Vortex hits your wallet, right? So it's all looking really good, and obviously you know people start taking profits, and then they'll bleed uh, those extra earnings into like caviar you know into rfx and it's just strengthening the whole ecosystem seems like armor and i have something to say so no i haven't talked or, or maybe i'm wrong can, can any can anyone can everybody hear me or I can't seem to hear Armorer. Uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, if anybody can hear me, just like raise your hand or send an emoji. Okay, nice, nice. I can't seem to hear you, Armor. Uh, you might have to drop and come back. But yeah, just send a bunch of... Uh, go ahead. Are you going to say something? So 
but yeah, just send out a bunch of like speaker invites if anybody wants to speak. Uh, as I said, I I don't know if I'm the best person to ramble on or, and talk about protocols. I think sometimes I rush a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think we're we're really well positioned. Uh, I think we just need to, you know, keep expanding the community, keep um, keep doing the shilling, because uh, you know more and more more and more people are noticing like our protocols. You know, uh, they're extremely well designed. All credits uh, to Ramalud, who is in the chat listening, um, and uh, yeah, they they've been all working flawlessly. Um, uh, well, we did have um, let, let me just uh, make Amir a co-host again one second yep so yeah they've been working closely um been looking at the protocols out on post chain, and I haven't seen protocols that. It's hard to see protocols that have been burning as much as as much coins as we do, and been paying uh, the level of rewards that we have been paying, and especially in coins that everybody wants to hold, right? PLS, PLSX, Hex, Die. Uh, I think actually Die X uh, is also a little bit undervalued right now. I mean, it's sitting at a, what, 60K market cap? Um, so, just sharing some thoughts. Um, go, go ahead, Armour. Let me see if uh, we can... No, you were good the whole time. It was me. This is why I can't be host. I always got things going on, and I got phone calls, and then they dropped me out. You were good the whole time. I was messing you up. Uh, no worries. I mean, Twitter is always buggy. It's buggy for me, too. Yeah. Never it's been really good for, like, the first hour and then after that. But What do you think's going on with Richard? Do you think he's going to continue to buy? I mean, I really hate to see, like, he pumps it up and then, you know, it, people sell. I just, but it's really good in a way. I mean, we do it, or we shouldn't say we do it, but it happens with our chart, too, you know? Like, I'll go buy make a, a, a big buy uh, vortex or something it pumps up and you kind of like flush out you know some people and if you look at um, s similar to to pulse is what kind of happened to vortex I'll bring up the chart but so um, about when I made that post um, you know that was the first of January vortex ran up hard. And it sold. It sold off back to that kind of resistance. But it recovered. Right? But you flushed out some of those people. And those waves are really good for long-term longevity. Right? So, like, Vortex right now pumped up. You know, it pumped up, like, five times. But every time, if, if somebody's going to sell, they're going to sell on a big green wick. Right? But if they don't get a chance to rebuy... Um, the token becomes stronger, right? Those people aren't there anymore, and you're left with diamond hands. And that's a little bit what's you know happening to to Pulse right now. I feel like so. Yeah, he's buying up the token, right? And we're getting a higher value to the dollar, but we're also like flushing out a bunch of weak weak wallets, weak people, you know, like. Because that is a hefty wick on, you know, it looks like the Vortex wick. You know, it came up, leg down, came up, leg down. So, um, I hate to see the cells, but I'm sure glad to sell it. And then they don't get a chance to come back, you know, screw them. Um, trying to pick up the pennies in front of freight chains, you know. That's so, what, uh, with the Pulse Dex, with with Vortex. Like, don't give them a chance to buy back if they want to be like that. Because it's short-term thinking. Like, I got, right now in my head, I got 18 months. So, like, right now, I compound with the Vortex, Groku, 
But there's going to be a point when the when I really feel like the bull run starts. I'm probably going to quit compounding because there's going to be people coming into our project like crazy. And I'm just going to live off of, of those reflections, you know, like that's the point. That's why our thing is so strong is you. It's compounding vortex for you. And and that's going to keep going up. And one day we're going to be able to live off. I mean, I, I compounded a $200 um, deal. I sold, I comp bought Vortex, or no, I bought Groku. This thing's getting so complicated, it's hard for me, even me to figure it out. But uh, with my Pulsex, I compounded and bought more Groku. Like 200 bucks, I mean, right now, yeah, that's not much, but it is a powerful compound. But guess what? In 18 months, when the project, when we're at a, you know, a, a good, 40x potentially um that's huge right so i think that's the goal that's why i'm compounding right now because i'm not trying to live off of this i'm trying to build you know the real estate and eventually the rent i'll get rent off of uh the real estate is kind of my motto but back to the wicks like flush these guys out like i'm here for a long time you know I think that's what Richard's trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. It's all flush them out. It makes a stronger, uh, stronger project. No, I agree a hundred percent. I think that that should be the mindset, uh, that everybody should be seeking, right? Like, um, you're just creating buy pressure. You're never selling the asset and then you can live off passive income, which is the end goal, right? Uh, you know, and when you're not selling the asset, you know, it just creates a vicious cycle where people see the price go up. People see that people are earning a lot of rewards and, you know, more people join, the protocol gets stronger and you're never really, really uh, touching that liquidity, right? And um, yeah, it's just, uh, there's a lot of short term uh, mentality. Uh, unfortunately, people uh, really, really, really have that, you know, short term thinking. And, um, and yeah, never underestimate the power of, you know, compounding like a dollar here and there, $5, $10 might not seem much, but you know, over time, um, uh, a lot of people doing the same thing, it, it really adds up, you know, compounding interest is one of the strongest forces, you know, in the universe. And, um, yeah, just to give an example on that short term mentality, there's people like that in the market. It's inevitable. I have a friend who, not as you know, not as not deep into the rabbit hole as as we are with Pulse Chain. You know, everybody that's in Pulse Chain, they're very crypto savvy. But he he joined in on the hype. You know, he sacrificed, but he doesn't really get crypto. You know, so he saw the recent pump of Pulse Chain and Pulse X, and he was messaging me like saying oh damn should i sell it now and like make sure i like at least get my sack money back you know and it's just like man don't do that <laughs> don't do that and uh but yeah there's people like that in the market it's just it's incredible i mean there's like people who got into goku and uh, you know they pay like the 30 percent tax right uh, initially that's how we designed the launch and but then again you're earning massive rewards right uh due to that people people who are you know got in early they're dumping some but people can't hold can't seem to hold a token for longer than like five minutes or one hour or one day <laughs> like 30 days and um we we all see what like these protocols can do right like in two weeks Boom, there's a 10x in Vertex. You know, in two weeks, that's like a 300% rise in, you know, almost 300% rise in Pulsex. And uh, that's, that's, Pulsex, it's what? It's in like millions and millions and millions of dollars of liquidity, right? Our protocols, there's so much room for growth and so early. Uh, it's the, the, the type of like price impact that we can have uh, in terms, and, and passive income that you can generate and like those movements up, right? It, it, it's just, it's it's amazing that anybody would, would think of like selling this, you know, and not like compounded. Uh, so that's just my, my two cents. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't want to talk shit about other projects, but there's so many projects like you got to buy and then you got to work at it, like maintain it, go in there, check your, all your other things and you got to stay up to date or else you'll get um, diluted. You know, like I'm not, we're not trying to build that. Like, that's why I love the Groku thing so much is like the only time I, I was ever like logging in and um, getting my hardware wallet out of the safe and all this stuff was to compound. Well, now with Groku, it's compounding the vortex for me. Like, I don't even find myself like logging in very much. And that would be like my goal, right? Is to set this deal up where I can go put all this stuff in the safe, check the charts once a week and go about my life, you know? And, and I just, I, I, I'm very satisfied with, um, with this grow coup vortex setup because I feel like I can just forget about it, you know? Um, and it's just going to compound for me. And then I'm going to wake up in 18 months and there's going to be this massive amount of pulse X in there. That's worth a shitload of money, you know? And that's the other like fundamental on the vortex is everybody's like, Oh, pulse X, pulse X. Well, guess what? When things are cheap, you get more of them, right? So like pulse X is undervalued. You know, Richard's going to make it right. So we're just getting that many more tokens of it, you know, if something that's a little bit more expensive, that's worth, you know, a penny or a dollar, if we were getting that, like, that's part of the reason, in my opinion, why the Diax hasn't done as well, which you're still, it's, the value is the same, right? It's just growth. Um, Pulsex is extremely undervalued. So if you're sitting in there compounding Vortex, and so you're getting more and more rewards of another undervalued token, when you wake up in 18 months, you know the high, the likelihood of you having something that worked for you that last 18 months. You know, it's 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 a no brainer. That's why all that shiny shit comes up. I'm not going to say names, but you got to go in there and you got to work at it all every day and maintain the miners and all this stuff. That's why I like hex. I set my deal in there. And I, that was my other strategy I was thinking about doing is, you know, I have a staking ladder is like every time I have a stake that comes off, I don't live off of it. I restake it, but maybe taking some of the value that I'm getting off of the vortex rewards and maybe adding a little bit to my staking ladder um, is the only other like maybe maintenance I would do. Maybe, I don't know. I still haven't figured it out right now. I'm just down in the Groku. Yeah, uh, na name of the game, I think it's, you know, buy, hold, DCA, and compound, you know. Um, we have, like, extremely, like, I think we have, uh, modesty aside, you know, I think we have one of the best protocols in Pulse Chain for passive income. And then uh, we are on the best blockchain in the market, you know, on protocols that are open to the world 24-7. Um, and... Uh, and remember, it's there's also aside from all the yield and you know, the the compounding. Like we we have an advantage that it's like well, our protocols are noob friendly. You don't have to do anything. You buy and you're earning. Uh, you're earning the best coins in the market. You're earning PLS, PLSX, Hex, Dai, and uh, don't forget also all the liquidity bonding throughout the protocols. Right, so everything is bonded with PLS, PLSX. These tokens, obviously, they're rising. They go up. They're expected to go up. Obviously, there's no guarantee. There's nothing that we talk about here is financial advice. But, you know, the liquidity bonding itself, it also helps appreciate your tokens. So, it's like you're winning on every side. Uh, the, the only chance that these protocols don't work if, is if people don't unite, right? Um but our whole our whole ecosystem and you know it's based on loyalty uh reciprocity uh and, and building this together you know expanding this network so uh yeah we're extremely well positioned um, protocols are working flawlessly and uh, all all of them are public verifiable code true DeFi, no admin keys liquidity burn um and uh and you know, we're kind of setting the standard on uh, on Pulse Chain. 
but uh, but we uh, unfortunately I, I see and this kind of like pisses me off a little bit to be honest is like people buy garbage like protocols like centralized coins you know um, all the time and uh, it's like you literally have a protocol this trustless and makes you yield and hex PLS PLS X and sometimes such protocols such as Goku uh, where you, you, you can compound vortex uh, and you also earn like kind of a dual yield right where you're also earning PLSX and um, and there's not many of these coins out in the market you see vortex itself there's only 6.3 percent supply available uh, RFX burnt almost 20 percent of the supply uh, so it, it's it's truly really amazing to see one that these protocols are working as intended and flawlessly and better than expectations. But is that anybody would be like willing to like sell these protocols? Because I know the core group, you know, the people who are in the OG chats, you know, in the dev group, like some of the OG investors, and then these guys are diehard, you know, holders, diamond hand, and the, the, I, I see that they're uh, working to build these protocols together you know they're putting funds aside to stimulate liquidity pools and that sort of thing so it, it's amazing to see so i'm very excited uh, that's that's pretty much what i have to say i guess uh as, again if anybody wants to speak raise your hand uh send me a dm and i'll put you online you can ask any any sort of question again we we have uh the main contract dev on the chat listening he might not be able to, to talk, but um, he can always um, take note of those questions and I'll follow up like one one on one uh, later. Uh, another important point that we want to talk about for anybody who's new to post learning ecosystem, like Caviar, uh, we, we want to be as transparent as possible. Uh, so anybody who needs help onboarding, you know, even if you need a like a face to face video call. To help you get to know the protocols, feel comfortable with the community, and uh, so you can onboard, uh, feel like you are getting onboarded safely, you know, into uh, a sound, uh, trusted community. Um, yeah, just feel free to reach, uh, re reach out to us, you can DM us, and we'll set it up. You know, uh, there's no problem. We want to expand this as much as possible. It feels really good to, you know, have Pulse Chain pump, and obviously you never want it not to pump. But number one game in the bear market is to accumulate, right? And you can't accumulate by holding and not doing anything. You know, you kind of have to do something. So I'm not, I wouldn't sell, tell anybody to put their whole bag into Vortex or Groku. But I don't know of a better way to accumulate right there is um you could run a node but the payout isn't very good um i'm all for decentralization um, but if you pay somebody else to run a node for you um and they're all in the same warehouse that's not really decentralization you know um yeah and, and it's hard to set up a node right it's not for everybody it's very hard yeah. Uh, to maintain it, you know, the connection and stuff like that too. Yeah. Yeah, I would never um tell anybody not not to do that. I would love to know how to do it and I would love to do it even though it's not profitable. But during this bear market, um and just because we're pumping, you know, two hundred percent, like that's that's not the bull run. We have so much more to go. You guys still need to think about accumulating. That's number one game, like I said. For my short-term strategy before it runs is just get as much as you can so I was just answering uh, some of the chat uh, messages and uh, yeah a anybody wants to speak uh, send us an emoji I'll get you on board. I don't want to like hog the space. Um, you just want to give us yeah, as much opportunity for people to talk and share their 
thoughts and opinions, you know. And we don't need to talk about, you know, can we talk about other stuff as well, other projects? Uh, you know, we're just trying to grow Pulse Chain as a whole in the end of the day. So, any other projects who want to speak, also feel free uh, for any people that want to share their initiatives and strategies. Yeah, no, uh, no dumb questions. I came in and I've learned a lot just by um, listening to Ramurd Fajari. Learned a lot, um, you know, started in this community like two years ago. Um, and they always, they always teach me and I ask stupid questions, have asked stupid questions and they, they answer them. Now I try to answer when people, when I feel like they're low level questions. I mean, we, we gotta, we gotta help everybody. That's what I feel like on these these NFTs. Like I had somebody, Pulseformer, sent them our way, um, and and they just they didn't know anything. They needed to watch a hundred hours of YouTube before they asked me some of the questions they asked me. But like you got to get people in, and these NFTs are such a good onboarding thing because they drip um, Pulsex to people. And they can't, you could sell them on a market, um, but right now it's probably not really worth it. So, like, I've sent some NFTs to people and they just get drip tokens. And yeah, they could take that and they could go buy a down forever token, you know. But then they'll learn from that. And then when they come back, they could buy something else off of this NFT drip. Um, so, we've had some people come into the community and it's kind of nice to have a tool. Um, like that, we've also rewarded some of the community um, for buying NFTs. Um, the NFT contract got help from Groku. Um, we've just been, there's so many complexities that we haven't talked that much about it, but 5% uh, of the Groku supply was sent to the NFT accelerator. And the NFT accelerator is is where the tokens the reward tokens come from, right? They get paid pulsex. So why is this important? So the NFT accelerator has Groku. The NXC accelerator is now getting paid Vortex that gets paid more PLSX, right? So now it's compounding. And everybody knows what compounding does. So these NFTs are accumulating Vortex, the accelerator. So over time, um, the NFTs are going to, should pay obviously it's based upon volume but should it be getting more and more rewards and it's always compounding working for you so it's another thing to do to maybe save you from yourself or save a newbie from themselves by sending them an nft um, that's something that we've added um, i think pulse former gave some away free mints with the hoa team for the tang gang uh, we've sent some to newbies that come into the chat I'm not saying we'll do this for everybody, but when we feel it's necessary. Uh, I'm not the biggest NFT guy. I'm not going to shill you hard on the NFTs, but they have, um, I think it's a great tool. And you do get caught up in some of the attributes, like there's some women, and I'm going to get me one. I still haven't got one yet. I still meant every once in a while. There's some um, Mandalorian women that uh, come up there that you can mint. I also want that, and there's some um, guild loyalty. I th I thought about doing this. You know, there's ideas like this, like um, we've been giving away some loyalty points, which is basically um, you know an airdrop of Groku. But like maybe in the future we could maybe airdrop based upon some of these attributes or something. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far into it, but um, I, I do really like the NFTs. Um, and just like the, I think the Tang Gang and, and what they've done with uh, the free mints and, and the hype and talking about them, it's good. You know, they've done a lot. Um, we're doing trying to do our own thing. And um, by dripping pull sex to people, that's my theory on our NFTs. Uh, Fajari, Pulse Valorian, he's a little bit more of um, an NFT guy, I think. Um, he probably has a much different outlook on them. Um, Actually, no, I don't like NFTs that much. I mean, um, uh, you know, just just based on, uh, you know, 
I, I mean, I like our NFTs because I see they have like utility. You know, they're uh, they're paying you per sex. So I like NFTs in the sense of like using them in contracts. You know, like to represent. You know, like a stake or to represent your share in something or or you know nfts that will yield you uh in some way so that which is which is our case right i, I like those types of nfts i'm not like into the nfts of like for the art uh type of thing like i think like the art is sort of a bonus like the collectible but that, that's very personal right there's people who love the N nfts for the art um, but I actually think uh, the NFTs, the art artistic aspect, actually, just correcting myself, they do serve a very, 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 very strong purpose of really giving a community, an ecosystem, a strong identity, right? Uh, so we, we see people on the chat, you know, kind of like Badik, myself, you know, Armor, uh, we, uh, like Ramu, we're all wearing like these, like, uh, Mandalorian type of figures, which are in our NFTs, right? So this is this is this really helps to establish the identity out on like you know, out on uh, the the crypto uh, crypt, uh, x dot com, you know, like crypto like space, right? Uh, everybody, everybody, like if we hop onto a space, everybody instantly recognizes, you know, that those are like loyal community members and just more really involved with the project and. Uh, and yeah, so I like it in that aspect, but you know, like the whole like paying a million dollars for you know a JPEG that's not really hosted on the blockchain, you know. So, but that, yeah, but I'm with Richard Hart in that sense. But like NFTs that pay you PLSX, they give you like a strong identity in the project, you know, and create uh, you know, some cool like um, <clears throat> some cool like engagement. I, I like that. Uh, so I'll I'll forward uh, the the, ch uh, the the mic to uh, one Lucas and then Ramud because I just saw that they both popped up as speaker and for anybody who doesn't know Ramud uh, this is a guy who you really need to follow uh, on on Twitter he's not as um, perhaps as active you know because he's busy always uh, but he's a contract developer and he's uh, actually the genius uh, behind all of the protocols. Uh, he's an extremely experienced developer with over 30 years of programming experience. And we don't see that around a lot. So I just wanted to extend uh, the mic to them. And then Lucas, uh, he's, he's a great speaker. Uh, so he can like pretty much run the space um, and, and share his thoughts as well. So <clears throat> yeah, Ramu, if you want to like um, share some thoughts on whatever strategy... Uh, whatever things you're seeing on Pulse Chain or crypto in general, I mean, feel free to share. Hey, how are you all today? Um, but thanks, uh, for Jari. Thanks for that intro there. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know that I did some contract work, but uh, to make it a success, uh, we takes community, right? And, uh, and the fabulous... Yeah, front end. So, and everyone knows, and if not, uh, that has been developed by Fujari. So, so it takes uh, more than one to build fabulous products and to make it success community, obviously. Okay, so everyone in first chain, whoever sacked, whoever entered, uh, bought PLS, PLSX, and some of these uh, tokens from Pulse Larian should be really happy the last few days, right? Uh, Pulse chain is pumping, um, and that's great to see. Um, did you talk about uh, the, like, I don't know if everyone realizes that Pulse, Pulse X is a deflationary asset compared to Pulse, right? Pulse chain, which is kind of, could be deflationary at times, could be inflationary at times, depending on the volume. Uh, so, we have seen the ratio between Pulse Chain and Pulse X uh, change over time, like recently. And what do you think about it uh, in upcoming period? Right. My view is uh, Pulse X will get stronger uh, against Pulse over time. 
just because of the fact that it will become more and more scarce. And guess what? Uh, what does Vortex give you? Pulsex, right? And what gives you Vortex? Groku. So, I really like this triplet, really. Uh, I'm heavily invested in it and will continue to go my bag in this three. But whatever I'm saying here is not a financial advice, obviously. I'm just letting you all know what, what I feel like. Yep. And, and NFTs, uh, are NFTs for you PLSX as well, right? So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let if there is uh, yeah, if there is anybody else who ask any uh, ask any question about any of our tokens, yeah. I'm happy to answer yeah. that. Yeah. A anybody interested in asking any particularly technical like uh, questions? Uh, any particularly you know contract related uh, questions? Uh, I mean, uh, feel free to speak now because that's that's why this we have Ramo in the chat. Just raise your hand. I'll invite you to speak. I think it's kind of crazy we don't have questions with as complex as this network is. I mean, it's as easy as you want it to be, too. You just buy them and sit, but there's some complexities. But I know uh, Ruckus wants to uh, give a little RFX uh, chill, and he has a really good perspective because he was in the LPs and he gets incentivized for being early with the LPs and the 2x reward for providing LP. So uh, maybe he wants to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, not a big deal. I uh, don't have a whole lot to say, but I was just uh, definitely, uh, I haven't built up my position for uh, Groku and uh, Vortex as much as RFX, obviously, but the reflections are... Uh, are awesome like i mean i've i've had other reflection tokens that you know don't pay out the same so like my my rfx reflections are insane so the pulse rewards that i'm getting even on a low volume day are way better than what you would get as a validator so that's why you know I've, I've, i continue to support a project or not project but you know what i'm saying i continue to support these tokens and uh i'm definitely invested in the other the tokens as well and I can't wait to see, you know, what the future has. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty cool feedback loop that you've created. So, apologize for the noise in the background. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, the two times reward for uh, um, your LP is really really awesome. You know, I mean, like, uh, I mean, I'm just like raking in the uh, pulse, just sitting back. I don't have to mess with it. I don't even really look at it that much anymore and just let it just let it uh, keep uh, piling in you know it's airdrop you don't have to do anything so uh same thing with the new token with uh Groku. so yeah it's a uh, it's really th these are really good projects i'm glad to be invested in them and uh you know this bull run's just starting so this is this is still early so thanks thanks for bringing me up and uh yeah this is a uh, this is a good time to be in, invested in a project like this especially like uh like Rob Merck was saying, I honestly was not a fan of, of PulseX until recently. I'm looking at it going, okay, maybe I was wrong about PulseX because it's it's starting to pump a lot harder than everything else. Not everything else, but, you know, it's, it's pumping pretty damn hard, especially against Pulse. So um, maybe I was wrong. And uh, PulseX is uh, looking really good. So the fact that, you know, you, you're this feedback loop that you're getting with uh, Groku and the uh, Vortex and the NFTs, because I, I do have a lot of the NFTs too, so I'm getting Pulse X from those as well. So, yeah, it's it's good. So, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing me up. But, uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing how, how you know, how much reflections keep piling in and just sit back and enjoy them. Yeah, so, so one of the smartest... Yeah. Uh, go go ahead. Uh, what's talking? No, I was just gonna say go ahead. Uh, crypto, uh, Phil, you wanted to say something? Uh, well, I just have a quick comment uh, on what. Yeah, the, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So one of the smartest ways uh, to invest is to 
uh, you know, provide LP for these tokens. It is designed to be that way. Um, now, uh, we, I have put this in the chat as well. Uh, what what is the advantage of providing the liquidity? Uh, first of all, you get two x, you know, uh, yield. That itself is awesome, right? But at the same time, you get the trading fees as well because these are V two liquidities. Okay, and then if the token pumps really hard, you kind of uh, selling a little bit at the time without losing your shares, right? Basically, you continue to gain the yield, but if the ratio of the token to PLS in the liquidity changes, so you end up selling a small amount, right? Uh, without having to pay for gas. On the other side, uh, if, it, if the token loses in value, then you end up buying it, right? And, and you have a choice of withdrawing some part of liquidity to increase your bag, right? So for those reasons, it's an awesome strategy right, to provide liquidity. For all our tokens, actually, all our pulsar tokens which uh, provide yield, that's the best strategy to invest in. Um, and uh, I also want to talk one little thing about uh, RFX. The best thing about RFX is, uh, and I do this with all my wallets, buy some RFX and leave it in the wallet. You would never have to worry about gas. Right? This is like, gas is always there, right? I mean, literally, you don't never have to worry about transferring PLS to do a trade from your wallets. So any, anybody else does the same? Like, I, I don't know. I personally like to do that. I <laughs> put it put a little bit of RFX in every wallet that I have. That's awesome. Uh, Ramud, I've got a question for you, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. I'm uh, ill today, so my voice is a little off. But... Um, I was going to ask you if you could explain the uh, accelerator bonus and the bonus buys on Caviar because I got into Pulse Chain through Hex because I was in Hex for uh, a while before Pulse Chain launched and I've got loads of T shares and I'm just I'm amazed at how much Hex uh, Caviar is producing for me right now. It's it's incredible. So uh, the the bonus buys that every hour I believe. And uh, if you could explain the accelerator bonus a bit more, I'd, I'd be uh, thrilled to that. Okay, that's an excellent question. Right? I, I think very few people pay attention to such finer details. Um, so the contract is written such a way that 10% of the supply is uh, reserved for these bonuses. And the way it works is 10% uh, annual rate, right, which if you divide by uh, days, divide by hours, divide by minutes, uh, every hour, whatever amount will be uh, uh, like accrued for a 10% supply is provided as a bonus for one lucky buyer for a particular block. So, so on the UI, on the front end, you would see that there is a block number specified. The first buyer in that block gets to keep that bonus so let's say because it's a 1 billion supply it starts out with 10 percent which is uh, what is it 10 million right so 10 million 10 percent 100 million oh 100 million sorry 100, 100 million you're right 100 million uh, in an hour whatever amount it would yield at 10 percent annual rate that is the amount available uh, for the first buyer in the block number which is specified on the front end. Okay, now uh, this is this is not going to be sustainable if we keep it constant, right? So what we do is uh, this reserved amount is deducted by the amount uh, the bonus is paid, and ten percent of that is uh, paid next time. So it is kind of uh, slowly decaying, but because we do that it is going to be there forever, right? So 10% of whatever small amount is going to slightly reduce every time we pay our bonus. Um, but it is going to be there for a very long time. I hope I explained it 
uh, is if there is any follow on question i am happy to answer that as well no that that's awesome the uh, the, the block stamp is that done by um, like a, do you do a block time stamp on on the contract or is it um, do you just do it every it a, so many blocks it is a block number uh, because block time stamp can be manipulated by validators so to keep it secure it is by block number so it is hard coded right? like every 360 block numbers right so the first tire in that block so if you have to win it and if people are competing with you you have to jack up the gas price so that you get it right uh, and I, I did not clarify one little uh, nuance there the bonus paid is never more than 10 percent of your buy price so let's say there is a bonus of 50 uh, caviar that's available there to completely uh, claim the 50 caviar bonus you'll have to buy at least 500 caviar ah okay sure yeah got you yeah that's yeah. great I'm actually developing my own protocol at the minute uh, that does not compete with the Pulse Loria network whatsoever. So, uh, Ramuda may pick your brains further in the future if that's okay. Yeah. I, I think Absolutely you have a well, question yeah. about Accelerator, no? There, there was also a question about Accelerator, I think. Oh, yeah, if we can dive yeah. into that a bit more, that'd be great. Yeah, Accelerator is very simple, very, very, uh, you know, simple in. Basically, what it does is it buys and holds, right? So, accelerator is a contract which acts as a benevolent veil. It has some, um, some. Uh, now we have several tokens, but let's say we take an example of caviar. It has some caviar in there, right? So, caviar is going to yield hex. So, it is accruing some hex over time. When it reaches a particular threshold, we enable a button called accelerate uh, on the front end. Uh, when somebody clicks that button, it uses that accrued hex to buy more caviar, right? So that way, uh -huh. it, it keeps on increasing caviar in its contract. Right? And at one point, when it reaches that level, uh, and the threshold is controlled by the, uh, you know, it's either controlled by the admin at the moment, and in future, it will be controlled by a governor's, governance contract. Uh, the threshold can be adjusted. When that threshold is reached, any future buys are going to go into a liquidity pool. So what will happen? Let's say, for example, if the threshold is set at 50 million, for example, 50 million caviar, and we already have 50 million caviar in the contract, the next accelerate invocation is going to actually take the hex, convert it into PLS, pair it with some amount of caviar, and make, like, we'll get liquidity tokens, and we'll earn 2x uh, 2x hex going forward for those liquidity pool. So it's just going to accelerate. That's where the name comes in. It just keeps on, you know, acc accruing more and more hex over time and bringing a lot of shortage of caviar. So it's going to accelerate the price of caviar, but at the same time, uh, it will start earning more and more hex and help the holders. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I assume as well as your program ex uh, programming experience and you've got some history of finance as well, is it? That's absolutely right. So uh, my history is very similar to Pulse Lorian. Um, so I, I, although programming for a little bit longer, that's all. Uh, I was into stock market and a lot of, I've done a lot of options and futures trading before getting into crypto. Um, I was involved in Bitcoin early on, like I started mining Bitcoin, but I never believed in Bitcoin at that time. In fact, I lost my computer. I had some wallet, I mined a few Bitcoins. I don't even remember how many, um, but I forgot. And uh, six, seven years later, when Bitcoin hit for like 40,000, whatever, then I recall, oh, that's something which I was playing with. But, you know, that was a lesson learned for me. And I really invoked uh, my interest in crypto and started playing on Ethereum, got, gained some more experience. And then I met uh, Paul Florian. And, you know, from that day, they have never stopped 
innovating. That's when we founded Pulse Orion. That's awesome, man. Uh, thank, thank you for your time. Uh, I'll step down now, guys. Thanks for having me up. Hey, thanks for asking interesting and yeah, good questions. Yeah, thanks a lot, Crypto, for yeah, and uh, success in your project too. Um, if you ever wanna, uh, like, whenever you have it ready, if you wanna, like, uh, let us know, it'd be awesome. Uh, I will do, yeah, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, we would, we would invest in it. We would help. Uh, our aim, uh, our uh, you know, philosophy here in person is we want to make person successful, really. Uh, so we we are open to helping out uh, any project and every project out there. Absolutely, I appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. Also, Crypto Phil, you um looking for your address for some loyalty points to give you uh, if you want to jump uh, in the program. Oh, uh, thank you, Amr. I'll I'll send you a DM. Thanks, man. And hey, Ramar, you brought up a good point about LPs, and uh, it's funny because a lot of people get so scared of like a permanent loss, and I don't have enough time in the other tokens to speak on them yet. But with my RFX tokens, I have never seen an LP because I got a lot of LPs, you know, and this particular LP stays pretty balanced. I don't know why, but it's it's like the most balanced LP I have. Where obviously when Pulse chain is pumping, you know, you're buying, you know, you're buying one side or the other, you know, whether, which coin is pumping, you know, and it always seems to balance out. Uh, I started this LP shortly after uh, the token launched, so I've had this LP for a little while now, and there's really no permanent loss at all. I mean, there's, there's none, really. It's, it's still balanced. It pumps back and forth, and meanwhile, I'm earning, earning, you know, Pulse, so... You know, yeah, LPs are definitely, it's, that's also something that I never messed with on Ethereum last bull run. I didn't touch LPs. And thanks to Testnet on Pulse Chain, you know, I, I you know, gained a little experience by playing around with Testnet and decided that was something I was going to do when Pulse Chain went live, and I'm glad I did. I mean, that's the best way to, to earn interest. I mean... I don't know why people who are letting coins sit in their wallet aren't putting them in LPs, but I get it. I get how people are a little nervous about that impermanent loss, but I'm just not seeing it with uh, my bags. Yeah, totally, Rokas. I agree. Um, um, I know we've been talking a lot about like Vortex and Goku since the more recent launches, but definitely RFX is uh, one of our strongest uh, tokens. Uh, is the strongest token, right? Because it pays on it pays pulse, so everybody wants to earn pulse. And I think just just as we did, um, just as we we introduced Groco, uh, which like to further boost uh, on Vortex, right? We have uh, we have other plans of um, you know introducing uh, ideas to further boost RFX. It's just you know we just like to. Um, uh, announce stuff when it's like concrete and we have it ready. You know, just we really rather like uh, like under promise and over deliver than you know just like make promises and like uh, and and not not and take longer you know to deliver. So we we actually prefer like surprise the community and uh, add like new stuff. So our effects, yeah, definitely. Like if you're new to post loyal ecosystem, definitely check that out because that pays you in pulse, right? And it is the, the strongest token uh, so far. Yeah, go, go for it. Go for it. Hex deck. No, just curious about your uh, Pulse Lorian thing. Um, you know, I heard about when it launched and stuff like that. Um, is that a tax token or, you know, maybe give a newbie a little bit of uh, information? You mean on uh, new upcoming products? Um, well, I, I jumped in when you guys were talking about Vortex, that I, you know, don't pretend to know anything about it, and yeah, oh. that's a tax token. Oh, okay, so, so you want to know about Vortex and Goku, is that it? Uh, well, yeah, sure, why not? You know, uh, maybe, maybe I was wrong, I didn't hear it correctly, so if it's something else, feel free to let me know. 
and we can talk about uh, whatever. You know. <laughs> well, you were talking. It, wasn't there a Pulse Lorian token or something like that? Correct. You you're just saying it paid out in PLS or something, but maybe oh, no, that's that's it. reflux reflux RFX. I was just saying it's a, the um, the main Pulse Lorian token, the one that's strongest oh, okay. in, yeah, in terms yeah. of liquidity. Yeah, that's my bad. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, you you're familiar with uh, Goku and Vortex, right? No, I'm not. No, uh, you know, I kind of jumped in there, but I didn't have anything to add, and I had to go take a phone call, so I just came back. Uh, no worries. Uh, maybe Armor uh, can give you like a quick rundown on Goku, um, or if he's not available, then I can uh, briefly explain it to you. Yeah, I'm available if that's what you want. Yeah, I feel like you explain it better than I do. That's why I asked. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So, um, the best example um, I can give of how it works is like what I was talking about on setting up a system and putting it your hard wallet in a safe and not having to deal with it. Is if you buy Vortex, you earn PLSX. But the problem that I found is that I was always logging in so I could compound my Vortex with the rewards. And so that's, you know, I, I want to set something up where I come back in 18 months when, you know, when I feel like the top of the market. So how what Groku does is it rewards you in Vortex. And this does two things. It, it compounds for you. So you should be earning more Vortex or you will be earning more Vortex and you will get a larger share of the Vortex pool that pays out PLSX. But there's more pumpamentals than that. That's the put it in a safe and walk away. A lot of the supply of, of Groku is in the accelerators of the NFTs, is, will be set up in liquidity pools, and that Vortex won't be sold, right? So the Groku contract is sending Vortex to these places it buys it, it actually open market buys it and sends it to what is essentially um, burning it, right? But it's enhancing the features of the accelerators and allowing it to buy more. But th they'll, it'll never sell on you, right? So over a long period of time, the, the system is hopefully set up to have more buys than sells. And, and that's all we really want is the NFTs by Vortex they use it for the accelerator. They don't sell it. They distribute another token. Same thing with the accelerator. Um, same thing. Um, that's what the system's trying to achieve, right? So if you buy Vortex, you get PLSX. You buy Groku, you're basically, in, in essence, compounding your Vortex bag without having to do anything is um, how I explain it. Yep. Okay. And, uh, I, I was going to also add that the, in Goku case, there's a massive burn as well. 35% uh, of the supply has already been burned, which is like, uh, I don't know, dollar terms is over like $100,000 or something already burned. So it's extremely scarce. Yeah, I followed what you said. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting to see how it plays out as well. Like, the, the whole, like, high slippage at the start. Um, I actually particularly liked it. Um, there's some jeeters who complain, <laughs> right? But, uh, but it's amazing. It's amazing. Also, for anybody interested, you need to confirm, right? You can go to the website confirm addresses but in one of the posts that i uh, put up top has both the vortex and groku um, contract addresses it's vrx and gru it's the middle post yeah i found them on deck screener and stuff like that so thank you Uh, 
any anybody else wants to join and speak and share thoughts or projects, uh, it doesn't need to be post line related. It can be post chain or anything else really. Now uh, we're here just to go a uh, post chain ecosystem. Feel free to uh, raise a hand. Oh, oh yeah, go for it. Go for it. Okay. Well, you know me. I mean, I always talk my book type thing, but. Uh, one of the things, because uh, like I was looking at the payouts, that type of thing, what things, different things pay out. And, and like for me personally, and this is my only, you know, this is my investment aspects is I've got 17 times the amount of PLSX that in the sacrifice phase that I did to PLS uh, originally, because all my sacrifices were full end stakes no emergency and staking um, into the sacrifice phase. But uh, I've been looking at things to garner more PLS. And, of course, one of my favorite projects, hands down, is Internet Money um, and the Time Token, uh, which has been on a rip on its own. I'm surprised I haven't seen that up in bubbles and stuff like that because it's gone over 3x uh, since I invested in it six months ago just in the value of time token, but it sheds off PLS dividends with no tax. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a money printer. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. KG is doing like excellent work in the uh, post chain space. And we also included um, a pool in, uh, in our farms for internet money. So if anybody wants to earn Alexia and pull with PLS as well, they, they can do that. I, I think Jojo, like he also wanted to speak. Jojo, Jojo. Hey, uh, quick question for you guys for uh, the NFTs. Uh, is there a, a royalty fee on selling a part of the contract? No, no. There's, there's, there's none. There's none. Uh, unless there's some like in the marketplace, marketplace uh, uh, by by design at the marketplace. I don't know if they take a fee or something like that, but. The contract itself, there's none. It's just uh, designed to yield uh, PLSX. And uh, recommended like uh, platform for trading the NFTs, at least that I found uh, best. Where you know everybody has their own taste. Is NFTs and posts. That, that for me is like best experience. Do you have any any other questions, Jojo? Jojo. No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Awesome, uh, guys. It seems like we've been running the space for close to um, like more than an hour and a half uh, now. Uh, I mean, if you guys want to continue running. Um, I can leave it open, and Armor, Lucas, Hexdeck, whoever wants to talk, you really, um, uh, guys can keep it going, um, and I can just leave it in the background, but I'll probably have to go, like, soon. So, if anybody wants to, you know, share any thoughts, um, um, uh, share any, you know, perspectives or projects or any any final questions, you have to feel free to hop on, or Armor, if you, Lucas, if you have something to say. But otherwise, you guys are also feel free to like keep running the space. I'll just leave it in the background, but I'll I'll, I'll probably be silent for a little bit. Unless there's questions, it probably be best just to shut it down. I know a lot of people come in here and view it, like on the weekends, and listen to it. And so sometimes when it's you know not six hours long, <laughs> it's a little more palatable. So. Uh, it's so true, so true. Like those spaces that last like for like six, eight hours, it's like you can't really digest all the info. You know, I, I think it's best to keep it short because then people can like you know spend time and like actually like listen to it with like you know straight to the point like discussion. You know, uh, Ramu, you wanted to say something? I guess. Yeah, no, no. I just wanted to mention that uh, if somebody in the listening to the recording want to ask a question or reach out to us. Uh, our telegram, telegram group is, uh, can you help me here, uh, Paislorian? What's the handle for our telegram yeah, group? Yeah, it's uh, the Paislorian, T-H-E, yeah. Paislorian. 
Okay, yeah, so feel free to reach out uh, yeah. to the Telegram our, group if you have questions. Yeah. yeah, it's also linked up on, on, on my Twitter profile. So it's okay, also perfect. on our website, testlearning.com. All right, gentlemen. Well, it sounds like things are closing up. I'm going to bow out. Thank you for the space. Um, appreciate you guys. And uh, I'm going back to my research on Texas. <laughs> so, um, quietly searching the housing market in my target area, and I'm very excited. <laughs>